So you missed me talking about future game releases, Axel? All right, I got you. Here are seven neat indie games coming to the Nintendo Switch this month. Songbird Symphony is a game that I completely didn't expect to really pull me in. This is a journey where you're an orphan chick named Burb who must find his true origin. Developed by Joystick Studios, this is one cute as heck adventure game with musical elements. You can see that the animation in this trailer is just one of the coolest things that I've seen in a while, especially this being a type of adventure platformer with a little bit of puzzle elements, it looks like. You use your musical chirps to move platforms, defeat bosses, and there's also additional notes that you can find, like secrets, and doing good deeds will unlock other music to use as well. The trailer is probably one of the best things because of the music in it. You can't have a really good musical game without really good music. So just take a little listen to this. Yeah, this is something that really sold me when I watched the trailer. It's something that I didn't expect to like this much, but it's something that I think I will pick up at the end of this month or maybe next month. How about you? Do you think this game, a really cute, adorable game, is something you would be interested in? I guess if you are a fan of musical games and also really cute stuff, you'll probably enjoy this one. This is a game that I didn't know was by Joy Masher, who also did one of my favorite indie games I played a few years back, and that was Onikin, which is a extremely like hard, difficult, old retro type of game. And they're known for creating retro style games. And this one really put me in. Not only is it the music, but it's just the detail and the sprites. I really become like, loving to sprites and seeing all of this detail especially when it has that little metal slug mixed with contra vibe in it it's something that i think that just looks really cool not to mention when i was looking at the trailer some of the trailers have that old school 90s type of commercial vibe which is just so cool you have the option to play as either character you have a badass soldier and you also have an insurgent robot so these are two characters that you can either play solo or in co-op there's five environments with hover bikes mechs and some pretty cool badass weapons from the looks of it this is something that i am really looking forward to and it's releasing really soon now let's take a step back something a little bit more relaxing etherborn is an atmospheric game where you are guided by a bodiless voice to seek your purpose this is developed by altered matter which is a puzzle platformer surreal type of game and from the trailer it has that beautiful build up from the soundtrack all the way to the end that mysterious type of sound where you don't know if you should be scared about it or if the game should really capture you but I think it does a really good job of doing both the gameplay mechanics from what I'm understanding it has gravity based environmental puzzles so depending on where you're standing depends on how you're going to be solving this puzzle i really like these relaxing type of games these are something that you can play for like 30 minutes on a coffee break or you can even play it all the way through i'm not entirely sure how long this one will be but if you want a really relaxing game especially after coming home or doing a lot of work then check out etherborn it looks like it's one of those games that has a really fun experience that is at least you want to play one time <laughs> Fantasy Strike. This is a game I seen a couple years ago and it's something that I'm kind of indifferent on. The reason I wanted to add this to this particular list of so many indie games coming out is because I'm a fan of fighting games and this one is trying to do it a little bit differently. It's an easy control fighting game which is coming out of early access. The developer Serling Games is creating a game that focuses more on depth 
and strategy and not so much execution. It's meant for like ease of use for beginners, modes like boss rush, team battle, arcade mode, daily challenge, and ranked tournaments are into play. So it seems like there's a decent amount of content and there's easy ways to integrate with the online. There's apparently one click and you're there in a the game with your friends, which is pretty interesting. The infrastructure for this one, when you're connecting and fighting against other players is using GGPO, which is probably the best type of infrastructure you can have. It's an excellent online structure, so you don't have a lot of um, lag or frame rate drops or anything like that. It doesn't have to catch up like some other games. And for this game, I think there's a decent amount of content. It depends on what you really like. If you really like stuff like team battles and arcade modes, which can be really fun to play. And if you want something a little bit more relaxing and not in execution, but if you want something with a little bit more depth, I'm not entirely sure if this will be your jam. I'm not sure if I'll pick this one up, but I hope it still does really well for those who are interested in Fantasy Strike because I know there are people who really enjoy it. 1,000 years ago, the wind, waves, and sun brought ashore the band of settlers to a wilderness full of exotic and savage creatures. Eagle Island may be my favorite game on this list. This is one I've been following for a couple of years now, on and off. And this is one where you're on a vicious island. Eagle Island is host of many dangerous creatures. You'll have to face as Quill, and you have a little cute companion named Koji. Your owl allows you to do some really cool different attacks in eight different directions. You can chain these attacks and the more you chain them, the better your reward will be, which is actually pretty cool how you can keep it going, but that's not it. This game does things differently. It incorporates three different modes, story mode, road lights mode, and speed run mode. This is really interesting because roguelite mode is something that not a lot of games do when it's combined with like a story mode or more of a casual experience. Um, speed, road, speed run mode is always just cool to have in games, but the reason this is really cool and it stood out to me is because it's procedurally generated worlds in this game. So it has a story mode and it's also procedurally generated the roguelite mode kind of comes into play like this with all of these cool looking boss battles apparently there's going to be 12 possibly more in the future options to outline your character and platforms to have it easier to see so enemies and also platforms will have an outline so it makes it easier for some to see and it also has an option to turn on auto aim so it makes it easier for players to enjoy i know there are people who just want to have a really relaxed experience or who are maybe not that great at certain games like platformers and road lights and just want to have something relaxing so i think Auto aim mode along with the other available features is really cool to have in this game. Being able to change how the uh, backlit is so it doesn't hurt your eyes. Having it more customizable so even if you want to play something really challenging, you can. Or if you just want to take a more relaxing approach, you can do that as well. This game by Pixel Nix. I hope it does good and I feel like it will do really well. They put a lot of effort into this game, especially if you look at the trailers, they really get you uh, enthralled with the whole Eagle Island experience. I recommend checking it out because this is one that I will probably pick up. A big collection from WayForward is coming at the end of the month. Mighty Switch Force is a game that I played. I played one, which was Mighty Switch Force Hyperdrive. This has all four games. So Mighty Switch Force Hyperdrive Edition, Mighty Switch Force 2, and Mighty Switch Force Academy, which was only on Steam, I believe. And it's like a really cool um, puzzle game. You control a character called 
Patricia Wagon who goes through these cities getting these criminals. And the really interesting thing and cool thing about this game is you use your ability to switch objects to bypass areas and to also destroy enemies. So it blends puzzle aspects and platforming aspects and a little bit of action because you have a gun that you can shoot and it's just one of the cooler type of games and it's a game by way forward which i feel like is really overshadowed by the shantae series because this series is one that's really fun to play it has like stuff to do with speed running if you're into that it has timers and playing the 3ds version of hyperdrive was pretty fun if you like that type of aspect of puzzles and it even has co-op up to four players when you play the mighty switch force academy game i think there's a lot of content here for what you're getting and if you're just a fan of way forward or the shante games give this one a try because i think it deserves a play from the creators of Rock of Ages and Xenoclash, some really weird games, comes a game that I don't know if anyone knew about too much. This is So Seraph, which is an pretty much is going to be an act riser game this is a game that you're protecting humanity as an almighty divinity as you rebuild and fight off mythical demons so this is actually sounds really cool civilization is in your hands as you rebuild it in a top-down strategy element and also as like side scrolling elements you switch between these different styles which is pretty awesome I played a little bit of Act Riser and it's a game that I didn't spend too much time with because I could never really get into it. But this one is really looking to pull me in as you go to like forests and caverns to fight enemies and you head back to your civilization and you build these defenses that really help the uh, people and the tribe so it can expand upon. There are things like healing herbs and ice shards that are powers you can gain for example by defeating challenging foes. If you're a fan of the Act Riser series or if you want to try something that seems really unique, I recommend So Seraph. I hope this game does well and I hope it comes out as a really fun game for people to play because it has a really unique premise and I feel like there's a lot of people who never played the Act Riser game in the past and seeing this inspired one is pretty awesome. So what game looked the most fun to you on this list? For myself, it's probably Ego Island. I really like Blazing Chrome though. That game is looking really fun. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear them. If you want to discover some upcoming indie games and Nintendo content, then feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of my newest releases. Until next time, everyone, take care.